Hey, Retcon Raider here. The recent storms knocked me a bit off schedule, but I still managed to find a little spare time, so today I thought we'd take things to the skies. The sunless skies, that is. Now, if you've been following Sunless Skies, you've probably already heard that it was released through Steam's Early Access program earlier this month. People who backed the project through Kickstarter have already gotten access to the early alpha build, but anyone else who's interested can also buy into the alpha through Steam for about 25 US dollars, depending on their region. But I suppose that begs the question, should you buy the game when it's in such an early state? Well, that really depends on exactly what you're hoping to get from it. Now, I really wanted to sit down and do a short Let's Play series showcasing the current alpha build of the game. But after giving it some serious consideration, I finally came to the conclusion that there's just not enough content to really justify a dedicated gameplay video. At least, not yet. So instead, I thought we'd talk about what is and isn't included in the current version of the alpha, to give people a better idea of whether they should grab the game now, or hold off until development is further along. First things first, it's important to remember that this game is still in a very early alpha state. I already said it before, but it bears repeating. This is definitely not everything the game will have to offer when it hits its full release next year. The full game will offer at least four massive regions of the Reach to explore filled with strange and wonderful places to discover, each with their own assortment of interactive stories. The player's travels will be spiced up with a relatively in-depth trading system, complete with the ability to smuggle illicit goods, as well as a wide assortment of deadly foes to face in combat, and loot to salvage from the bullet-riddled hulks that you leave in your wake. And to accommodate all that traveling, trade, and trial by combat, the game will allow the player to upgrade their spacefaring locomotive with an assortment of modular weapons and accessories, which will actually change the appearance of their vehicle. The player will also be able to recruit colorful crew members, each of whom will offer the player statistical bonuses, as well as unique story opportunities. The final game will allow the player to create their own custom captain, who will evolve over time as they gain experience points and complete stories until the player either achieves their ultimate ambition and wins the game, or, more likely, they die. And even then, the game isn't necessarily over, because the player can continue their story, either by loading a previous save, or by passing on their estate to a new captain, who will continue to explore the same persistent galaxy as they discover the legacy that their predecessor left behind. So now that we know what the final game is planned to include, let's talk about what the Alpha currently has to offer. Well, as far as exploration goes, the player can certainly do that. Only one section of the Reach is currently available, but it features at least a dozen locations for the player to discover, each with an assortment of stories to interact with. There are several minor quests for the player to embark on, many of them offering basic rewards, but the developers have not yet implemented most of the planned random events, so the actual traveling between locations can get rather boring. Resource management is a big part of the game, and the basic resource mechanics are in place. As the player travels, they'll slowly work through their stockpile of fuel and supplies, and running out of either can quickly lead to a captain's death. The player can restock at various ports, but that can be a bit tricky at the moment, because the planned trading system is largely unimplemented. That means there are no reliable ways to make money at the moment, outside of basic repeatable quests such as collecting port reports and ferrying passengers around the reach, and that can quickly become monotonous. The combat system has been implemented, and it's actually faster and deadlier than I had anticipated, especially given how relatively slow-paced combat tended to be in Sunless Sea. The player can engage in battle with a small number of basic foes, including raiders and ramshackle space engines, and giant spacefaring bees, and a few basic looting events can be triggered after defeating those foes. The player can even make some basic upgrades to their locomotive, purchasing a handful of improvements including a small number of new weapons, though this is obviously just a fraction of the upgrades that will be available in the final game. Likewise, the player can recruit a few of the planned unique crewmen, but there are at least a few others who haven't made it into the game yet, and none of their unique stories appear to have been implemented. 
Sadly, the player can't make their own custom captain yet, and are instead assigned a generic captain with the street urchin background, which comes with a default score of 20 in each attribute. But the player can gain experience points, which eventually result in level ups, allowing the player to explore the current version of the Facets and Deeds system. This involves making decisions about your character's backstory one level up at a time, allowing the player to improve their attributes and build their backstory at the same time. It's a pretty interesting mechanic, and I'm hoping to see the player's backstory decisions better implemented into some of the game's stories as development moves forward. The player's captain can certainly die, that much has certainly been implemented, and death is a likely occurrence while exploring what the Alpha has to offer. But when that death occurs, the player's only option is to quit or reload to an earlier save, because the legacy system has not yet been implemented. And of course, there are bugs to contend with. Locations will disappear, scripts will misfire, and sometimes the game will even freeze or crash. Things like that are inevitable at this early stage of development. So, with all that in mind, should you buy the game now or wait until it's closer to its final release? Well, like I said before, it depends on exactly what you're hoping to get out of it. If you're looking for a finished product or even a polished demo, then this obviously isn't the time to buy Sunless Skies. The current version of the game isn't even close to finished, with less than a quarter of the planned content currently implemented, and many of the current mechanics that have been implemented are obviously subject to change as development on the Alpha continues. But if you're just eager to get a taste of what the game will eventually have to offer, and you have the patience to deal with an overall slow pace, punctuated by occasional moments of frantic action or frustrating bugs, then sure, this is a good time to buy the game. And of course, if you just want to support the developers with an early purchase, or if you're actively looking to provide them with feedback and bug reports about the current version of the game, then this is obviously a great time to pick up Sunless Skies. Personally, I think the project already shows a lot of promise, and even in its current limited state, I've already sunk about 10 hours into just roaming around the Reach, carrying out odd jobs, investigating mysteries, and picking fights with the occasional raider to break up the monotony of the relatively slow-paced travel. Oh, and uh, dying. I've done a lot of that as well. But hey, much like in Sunless Sea, death is just part of the game. This is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about Sunless Skies, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the store page on Steam, or the crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. Links are in the description.